Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining the Coronavirus Pandemic Global Revival Prayer Facebook Live uh, call. We really appreciate you. Uh, today is uh, Friday. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic program lined up for you. Uh, today we have uh, Pastor Dr. Bishop Thomas Oputi. Uh, we have Dr. Michael Robinson out of uh, Tipito, Louisiana. Uh, Bishop Oputi is from Ghana, Accra, Ghana. And then Pastor Sean Griffin is from Baton Rouge. And then we have uh, Pastor David E. Rhodes, uh, my cousin. Uh, he's from Tipito, Louisiana as well. Uh, gentlemen will be joining our call here shortly. I wanted to get online and welcome you to the call. Appreciate you for coming on the call with us today. One of the reasons why we began this call is because we felt an unction from God. Uh, Bishop Thomas actually came to me, uh, called me up and he said, David, God has shared this word with me that we are to start a spiritual warfare. We are being attacked by the enemy. Uh, this pandemic is going on, on across the globe, around the world, and we need to speak on behalf of the kingdom. Um, and, and I started thinking about it, prayed about it, and I said to myself, I said, David, you know, every time I turn the television on, there's somebody talking about the pandemic. There's somebody talking about the coronavirus, but I don't hear anybody speaking about God. I don't hear folks talking about God. So what we decided to do is to come online and represent God's kingdom so that we can give a perspective, a variety of voices from around the world uh, so that the people can get a different perspective on what's going on in the various regions around the world. Uh, next week, next week we're equally excited. I'll be speaking with uh, pastors out of uh, out of Kenya. I'll be speaking with a pastor out of Kenya. And if you haven't seen it on the news, I have it. But if you don't know, Kenya is being ravaged by flooding, rain. Uh, and, and a lot of the home, I don't want to say a lot, but in cer certain parts of the country of Kenya, uh, there's flooding that's going on and it's causing the home, some of the homes to collapse and people are dying in Kenya. Uh, now Kenya is a large country, folks. So uh, we'll get more details on that next week. And then also we'll be speaking with a brother out of Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria, I spoke again with him yesterday a very, very passionate brother in the, uh, in the kingdom. And then we have a brother out of Lansing, Michigan as well. Uh, then there's another brother that's coming out of South Africa for next week's uh, broadcast, which will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, I want to uh, introduce you to a great friend of mine. I, I told him last week, I said, you are my bishop. You are my bishop. Uh, this this brother right here that you see online with us right now uh, is an awesome man of God. Uh, he hears from God. He speaks on God's behalf. When I when I seen him, um, he was in the United States about three months ago, two months ago, something like that, and I followed him everywhere he went. I just said, well, I caught him and bugged him. I said, wherever you go, I'm going. And that's what happened. I seen him preach. And, and he put his hands on this woman's belly. And when he touched her, the woman almost lost her balance, y'all. I mean, this is a very conservative Baptist church in which this happened. It was amazing. Uh, and we had, and we had, I will tell you, we had a great time with the brother as he was preaching. Uh, and his style is very passionate. He gets real into the message. And, and, then, and then in between his preaching, he brings various songs 
to lift up the worship level of the congregation. Hey, uh, Pastor David, your uh, phone, you might want to turn it landscape because you're coming across. I thought I did. There you go. Okay, that's perfect right there. No, nope. there you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, but anyways, let me introduce you to, uh, no, don't need to say anything else. I do. I got something else I wanted to say. God just brought it back to my memory. Pastor Bishop, Dr. Apute, has two master's degrees, folks. He has two master's degrees and a doctorate. And he is a general secretary uh, and presides over 60 plus churches in Ghana. Hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. That is a major commitment, a major commitment. Uh, I was at the seminary with him when he was here in Grand Rapids uh, just earlier in the year. And I learned uh, that uh, Dr. Oputi had finished his one of his master's degree. Uh, he holds the record, the record time and the amount of time that it took him to get it done. So he is a student of the word. He loves the word and he loves God. Uh, folks, I'd like uh, to introduce you to my friend, Bishop Dr. Thomas Oputi. Also, we have... Also, we have uh, my cousin, um, Pastor uh, David E. Rhodes Sr. Uh, I found out that Pastor David uh, has been ministering uh, ever since he was 12 years old. He was a minister of music at a local church in Tipito, Louisiana. Excuse me. Bless you, sir. Woo, pardon me. And... That's amazing in itself. I have never heard anyone. I've heard about boy preachers, but I've never heard about a boy minister of music. So <laughs> this man loves worship. He loves God. He's a pastor. He's founded this ministry, and it is thriving, and it's growing. He's definitely served his time in the kingdom. He's earned his stripes, uh, and he's a solid man of God. He's agreed to give us a song. Um, we're improvising right now because uh, he couldn't make it home. He had an emergency. So he's pulled over at a park that he does some of his live videos. Uh, Pastor Rose, please take it over for us. God bless you. Yes, sir. Um, that, let me just do this first, just to kind of set the atmosphere a little bit. But there was a song that they used to sing in, in our church a long time ago, and it went like this. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wonderfully fair. There my Savior, he awaits as he opens the gate to that beautiful garden of prayer. Tis a beautiful garden, a garden of prayer. Tis a beauty for God and of prayer. There my Savior, he awaits as he opens the gates to that beauty, that beautiful, beautiful garden of prayer. Amen. Kind of reminds me of where I'm sitting right now in this area, in the park, just a beautiful place to pray. Father God, bless us mm -hmm. right now, Lord. We thank you for, for this, this live. We thank you, God, for, for every man who's going to speak on this line, almighty God, that you would give us wisdom and knowledge from on high. We bless you and we thank you because we know every good and perfect gift comes from you. We thank you right now, almighty God, for what our eyes have already seen, for what our ears have heard. And we know, Father, that good things are on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. 
Amen. In Jesus' amen. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the beautiful song. You know, uh, Bishop Thomas, I was thinking about something you were sharing with me, one of the messages that you had preached the other day. And I was wondering, I know I'm catching you a little off guard, but I know you can handle it. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the walls of Jericho. You were telling me that the walls have to come down. Yeah, um, yes, I remember preaching a message on the walls of Jericho and the fact that God asked the people to go march around the walls. And then on the seventh day, they had to go around it seven times and after which they were to shout. And once they lifted up their voices, the walls came down. Yes, sir. And I remember preaching the message that this is not the time for us to be quiet. This is the time for us to lift up our voices. And it's good we just brought this up because a lot of people are thinking that everything will just be normal regardless of what we do. But I'm, I'm telling you it's a lie. Our faith needs some action. The Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's this right. is not the time for us to be quiet. And let me add to it by saying that Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, would have died a blind man if he had kept quiet that day. That's right. That's right. He would have died a blind man. If That's Anna, right. In First Samuel chapter 1, if Anna had failed to cry, she would have died a barren woman, yes. even though God had a plan for her. So this is the time for us to lift up our voices. He said, give yourself no rest. You will call on Jerusalem until he has established Jerusalem. We are too quiet. I believe the church is too quiet. We are allowing the world to do all the talking, allowing the medical reports and the news outlets to do all the talking. We are the light of the world. You don't, you, you know, if every place, and yes, I know, you know, in the U.S., you don't often have light out, you know, as we do uh, yeah, very often. Lights are, in, are used to just going off like that, like as we speak in the light can just go off and may come back maybe the next day and all that. And every time the light goes out, the one who is having the flashlight or the torchlight, as we call it, you are supposed to lead the people. That's if right. The church is the light. This is the time for us to lead. We are allowing the world to lead. We have the light. We should lead. We are too quiet. We are the treasure. And the apostle said, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that, that this tremendous power in us is from God and not from us. Amen. We are adverse on every side, but not crashed. What are we doing? We are too quiet. Let us start shouting. Let us cry, start crying on these walls. And no matter how gigantic these walls look like, they will collapse before us. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, man. You know, and that was the message that Bishop gave me. He said, David, this is not time for us to be quiet. It is time for us to speak up and speak out. <clears throat> now, Bishop, I would, I would like to ask that you could uh, please if you could lead us into prayer and take us to the throne, please, sir. Yes, yes, let us pray. This is the confidence that we have, that whatever we ask in your name, you will do it. That's right. Father, at this time, we come boldly before your throne of grace to seek from you grace and mercies that will help us in this time of need. Lord, when we look around, what do we see? We see people turning into numbers. We see children becoming motherless and fatherless. 
we see people becoming widows and widowers. But we say with the psalmist at this time, that we look up unto the hills, but our help will come from you, O Lord. We are crying at this time, Lord, that you come and help us. Father, we come before you as in the days of the early church, when they were under oppression and affliction under Roman rule, and they cried, saying, Maranatha, meaning, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Father, we say at this time, Maranatha, come quickly and save us. Lord, yes, come sir. quickly and save us. Let your mind be seen. Let your glory be seen. Let your power be seen. In the name of Jesus, Father, visit every medical research center. Visit every hospital. Father, visit us now in a very special way. Yeah. Those who are in the process of recovery, I pray, oh Lord, that their recovery will be very quick. Those who have been labeled as being in critical condition, Lord, I pray that you give them the grace to come through in the name of Jesus, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Once again, Lord, I come before you and I lift up all the frontline health workers who are working and risking their lives before you. Yes, you, Lord. Oh Lord. Father, I pray they have families too. My prayer right now, oh Lord, that in the course of doing something good, they don't end up regretting it by becoming victims themselves. Lord, I pray that you edge them in, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. in the name Jesus. of Jesus. For your name's sake, Jesus. Lord, preserve them. For your name's sake, Lord, protect them. In the name of Jesus, build, build those walls of consuming fire around them. Finally, Lord, I pray, for every family under the sound of my voice. Lord, this is the time. Don't let your presence leave us. Lord, this is the time. Don't let your love leave us. Don't let your power leave us. Don't let your message lead us, leave us. In the name of Jesus, protect every household under the sound of my voice. Let our children be preserved. Let our mothers be preserved. Let our fathers be preserved. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, show yourself strong. You said the enemy, when he comes like a flood, you will lift up a standard against him. Father, the enemy has come in like a flood. A mm. flood that is sweeping our children away. Yes. A flood that mm. is sweeping our fathers and mothers yes, away. Sir. Help, Father, Lord. Show Help them Lord. Your standard. Lord, show them your standard. Let them see your standard. Let them know that you are a God of war. The host of heaven will invite you right now to be part of this battle. Chariots of fire in heaven, we invite you to be part of this battle. Let the shedding of innocent blood come to an end quickly. In the name of Jesus, Father, let not the rod of the wicked continue to remain on the land and look at the righteous. I thank you, O Lord, for what you have done in the past. Our fathers have always gone to war with you. And whenever mm. you are on their side, they have never been defeated. You have declared yes. victory for us. Yes. You have declared yes. victory for your church. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we stand on the authority of your word. And we claim that victory that you have won for us. Yes. You have declared it is finished. This virus will spread no more. This virus will damage no more. I ask for a restoration of everything we have lost. Finances, the financial restoration, business restoration, economies all over the world be restored in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for answered prayers. Mm -hmm. And I thank you in anticipation for what you will continue to do. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name, have I prayed. 
with thanksgiving. And Jesus. wherever you are, I need to say amen. amen. And you can type that in the comment section. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I would ask that anybody that's in the room, uh, everybody that's in the room, would you please uh, take an opportunity if you would like to share a prayer request. Uh, if you would like to share a prayer request, uh, that's what we're on here for. We are on here to pray. We're on here to enter into battle with God's kingdom. We're in here to enter into battle with God's angels. This is a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. I don't have to tell you. I know you know. There, there's an enemy. There's an enemy out here, and he has legions of dark angels that have fallen from God's throne and that are warring on this earth. It's an, it's an invisible war going on all around us right now. And we are here calling on God's angels. We're calling on God's throne. We're calling on the Holy Spirit that we're right there with them. And we're in the fight. And we're praying. And we're calling this revival. We're calling this revival to call down this virus. We That's say right. hallelujah to God's hallelujah. throne. Thank you. Right. Thank right. you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh -huh. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yes. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm. Mm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm. How many know we are walking in the valley of the shadow of death? We are literally walking in the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> but yes. I fear no evil, for uh -huh. so thou art with me. That's right. Thy That's rod right. and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm. I'm thinking about that shepherd with that rod and that staff. He's protecting me. He's beating those enemies down with that rod. Mm. Thou preparest a table before me mm. in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. God's still it. protecting us. Amy, it. he's it. giving us a feast. Amy, can it. you imagine what God's table looks like? Hallelujah, somebody. When you go to your Thanksgiving dinners, you go to your Christmas dinners, your family dinners, and mom and them make up that table and it looks all beautiful and all the decorations on there. Imagine what God's table looks like. Woo! Can you see the color? That's Can it. you see That's the splendor? It. Can you see the glory? Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. He's feeding us mm. with his word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thou anointest my head. Woo! Imagine the anointing coming down on your head right now. Can you see the anointing coming on your head? Can you feel the anointing coming down? Yes. Get into the spirit, brothers and sisters, and feel the anointing yes. of God. Hallelujah. 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 Feel the anointing raining down on your head. It yes. says that my cup. Woo! Now I got a cup. I got a cup, but the cup that God gives me, it overflows. It overflow, it runneth over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Surely, yeah. surely, goodness and mercy True. shall follow me all the days of my life. Woo. All the days of my life. And I, <laughs> and I know I can speak for these brothers right here. We will dwell in the house of the Lord the forever word. and ever. Amen, That's amen. That's the word. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word. I want to introduce my friend here. Mm. Pastor Sean Griffin. He's down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm. That's all right. I see, I see where God has brought me from. Mm. I see where he brought me from. And I think about his grace and his goodness and his mercy that has brought me through. I see the struggles that I had. 
I see the valleys that I walk through, and I think about the Savior that was with me everywhere I went, whether it was in the dope house or it was in any other place. God was with me, and I heard his voice in every place I was at. God said, David, stand up. When I was sinking down in sin, I was sinking down in the sand. God said, David, get up, arise. Get up. Mm. That's why, that's why I can't help but get emotional when I think about the goodness of God. I think about his goodness. Hallelujah. <sighs> Pastor Sean, Pastor Sean, let me introduce to you my friend. My lifelong friend, my friend, Pastor Sean Griffin, uh, another strong man of God. Uh, Pastor Sean, uh, we, we call him Prophet Sean because God, I know 100% fact, God speaks to this man. Amen. Uh, I can tell you a quick, 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 quick story. We're over in Applebee's, me and Sean here in Grand Rapids, and we're with one of our other buddies, Jay Whitley, and oftentimes when we're together, we will witness and we'll, we'll preach the word, we'll say something, we'll invite people to church, we'll ask them are they saved, and we're sitting here enjoying our meal. You know, I'm thinking, you know, it was just us three and we're enjoying our meal. Sean starts to go in on this table behind us. He gets up, he says, Jay, let me out. He gets out. And he goes over there and he introduces himself and he starts to call out these people's past to the point where the lady was crying. The lady was crying and the man was like, oh my God, he didn't know how to take it. He didn't know if it was time for him to leave. He was scared. And Sean was calling out their past and, and he told him, he told him, I don't want to go into what he told him, but he told him. He said, in essence, you got one last chance to get your life together or God's going to take your life. It was, it was incredible. And the man, he knew. He knew because he had messed up. He had done some things. He had messed up. Okay, enough of that. My, my brother, he has founded this ministry, House of Deliverance Ministries. And I'm so proud of you in the kingdom. So proud in a godly way of you, man. He just moved his family. Uh, his beautiful daughter and son and his wife, he moved his family to Baton Rouge because he heard the voice of God. And here he started his ministry. Amen. John, please give us a word. Amen. Amen. Well, God, I thank you for that, that introduction. Um, I, I just truly believe I, I was thinking about that this morning that James chapter 1 verse 22 says don't just be hearers of the word that's right but be doers mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like looking in the mirror at yourself but you walk away and forget who you are mm -hmm. I think some of us have forgotten who we are mm -hmm. one thing I think we're struggling with is we can hear God 24-7 but if we ain't doing nothing, it don't mean nothing. That's right. And so that's, that's my motto of, it don't matter where you are in life, what are you doing? Are you a doer of his word? Mm. And so that's, that's what just came to my spirit, because I was going to share that this morning for Inspirational Friday. Amen. And we just we had technical difficulties all day, but, you know, I know the enemy is defeated. But I just want to encourage somebody, wherever you at right now, become a doer. Wherever you at, I mean, stuff that's going on, but it's time to start doing some things. And, you know, I'm going to let the cat out the bag for next month. I'm teaching this series on keep on dreaming. Mm -hmm. Don't stop dreaming. Crazy. And so yeah. we have lost the fact that God has given us a dream. But in order to make that dream, we got to do something. We got to make some stuff happen. And so I'm encouraging all my brothers online and people that's watching, listen, adopt the model. Nike said it best. Just do it. And so I appreciate my brother and those who are watching, but 
I'm Amen. excited. I ain't, I ain't distracted. <laughs> Watch that, that word. I'm excited, but I'm not distracted. Come on, somebody <laughs> got to catch that right there. That's because it. I see what he's doing. You got to see through the eyes of God and what he's doing. He's mm -hmm. not. He's, he's forever God. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. But watch this. He's not in yesterday. He's in tomorrow. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody right that's now. That's right. That's it. That's so he's it. waiting for us to catch up where he is. <laughs> and that's what we're missing because we want the same glory from yesterday. He said, but right. behold, I do a new thing. So I'm looking for the new thing and what he's doing. So I encourage somebody, come on, let's start doing, y'all. Let's tie to this all this. Let's work together. And let's make some stuff happen for the kingdom. Amen. 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 Um, Pastor David, uh, on on Wednesday, on Wednesday, you share with us uh, how this global pandemic was affecting you personally, um, and I wonder if you would please. I know we have some new uh, listeners with us today. So, uh, would you please share a little bit about that? And then also, can you speak to us about uh, you know what's going on in your local community as far as this how this virus is affecting the economy, uh, how it's affecting the kingdom, you know, the other churches. What's going on? Are there movements going on? You know, are we are they doing any? Are we doing anything with the community? Amen. Let me um let me first just kind of address this because this is one of the things that I have faced in 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 many many situations that I've been in, and that's where a lot of Christian folk, those of us who are saved and and uh, parts of the kingdom, you know, the the Bible says that people perish from a because of a lack of knowledge. It also says mm -hmm. that wisdom is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. So what God wants us to do is He wants us to get knowledge to understand. He says, study to show yourself approved, the workman that need not be ashamed, but that can rightly divide the word of truth. And the one thing I find is that when we get in these particular situations, when we get in battle mode, everybody seems to be okay as long as everything's going all right. But when we get in battle mode, we tend to forget what the words of God really are. Mm. So the one thing that I've mm. faced a lot is, is I've faced a lot of people asking me, is God doing this? Is God creating this? Mm. Is this yes, the hand yes. of God? And, you know, it, it, it's actually an amazing question. And the one thing that I never try to do is I never try to speak the mind of God unless God gives me go. a specific revelation. There but there's some things that I understand about God. And I'll be brief, but let me say this to you. God says that he is not the author of confusion. He's mm. not the author mm. of confusion. And if there's one thing that we're wrestling with right now, it is a whole lot of confusion. The enemy has assigned all of his demonic forces to just start making noise in the atmosphere. Yes. And they're, they're screaming so loud until the point where he, he's making it so we cannot hear the voice of God. The mm. first thing we need to do is we need to command the power that is in us. The Bible says you got to give God something to work with. You have to have a power that's already in you for God to be able to work a situation through you. Amen. The one thing I tell people all the time, you got to understand that whatever God is trying to get from you, he's already put it in you. He's just asking you to release it so that he can maneuver it the way that he wants to maneuver it. So the enemy, the enemy's hand is busy, and we have to understand that there's, those things are going to happen. The Bible says, according to the word of God, it is appointed unto man a time to die. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. We've got to get our continents right, and we've got to know that God is good, God is faithful, God is true. And no matter what happens, whether it was God's hand or not, think about it. Job had no idea why he was going through the hell he was going through. But he comes up with this amazing emphatic statement. He says, though he slayed me, mm -hmm. yet will I trust him. He said, even if mm -hmm. it's God doing it, right. I'm mm -hmm. still going to trust him. I'm still going to trust him. I'm still going to believe that God is able. And whatever he does, he does with purpose. So the devil means this situation for bad. But God is going to turn this into good. And I know God is going to turn it into good. I know good things are getting ready to happen. But the bottom line is, as, as the people of God, as Bishop said earlier, we got to speak. We got to learn to shout. 
We got to learn to shout. We got to learn to bless the Lord. We've got to learn to get our joy. I want my joy back. Uh -huh. I want my peace back. We've gone through some issues here. We've lost people that I'm very, very close to that I've known practically mm. my whole life. They were vibrant on Wednesday and then they were dead on Friday. And a lot of that mm. left, left me a little bit weary and wondering what's going on. But then the scripture says this, and I'll be done. It says, let us not grow weary in well-doing mm. or in due season. Now, uh -huh. when is your due season? It's whenever God says it's due. You understand? So we may have to go through some issues and some schisms and some isms and all of those things. We may have to go through that. We may have to deal with that for a while. But God says, don't you grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap when, mm. when you, if you faint not. This is not, this is not a race to see how fast you can run. It's a race to see if you can make it to the end. He who endureth till the end. This is an endurance race. And it's time for the body of Christ to start in, 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 the, in the spirit, to start lifting weights so that we would grow muscles and grow our, our spiritual muscles stronger so that we can fight back. The scripture says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. And sometimes that, that scripture is misinterpreted. That scripture means that those forces of the enemy, they're coming in to try to take the church from us, to mm. take our spiritual lives from us. The violent, the, the, the violent take it by force. But we have to stand up. As Bishop said mm. a little while ago, and I know I, I keep quoting Bishop, but he says, we got to know that the Lord will raise up a standard. The enemy doesn't fear us, but he fears the Christ that's in you. And so when he sees the Christ in you, then he has to surrender to whatever you command him to do. Mm. Amen. 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 Wow. Powerful, powerful word. Build your spiritual muscles. That's wow. it. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got to say amen to what you said. I, I, I always tell folks the same thing you just said. The enemy has been down roaming this earth yes. for thousands of years. You and I have been here less than 100, 50, 40, 60, 70. You can't fight that enemy by yourself. That's right. That's, that's, why, that's why we call on God, right? Hallelujah. I know everybody in this room is with me. That's why we call on God, because we know with the power of God mm, that everything is possible and nothing is impossible. Mm. Bishop, Bishop Thomas, Bishop Thomas, Dr. Aputi, I would like to ask you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Woo. I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, if you would. Last week on Wednesday, you were talking. You you eluded. You said something, but you didn't really expound on it. And I heard something, and it didn't come to me until yesterday. And I heard you say that people are dealing with uh, with hunger. Uh, I was watching BBC Africa yesterday, and that's what brought it back to my mind, that they were sharing that there's a lot of uh, areas, some areas in Africa, there's areas in the United States where people are dealing with the struggle of getting food. That's right. You know, because, because their income has stopped, and you were speaking about that because most of the people are entrepreneurial in your community. Uh, could you expound on that and, and what initiatives you and your church have taken? Yeah, we, we notice we notice the growing need of the people, not just the, not just the congregation, but the community at, at large. We notice the, the, the current crisis has generated a lot of distress, economic distress, fear, and anxiety. And as a leader, I started thinking, how can I come in? And it was really difficult for me because I believe God called us to give the people spiritual food. Amen. And then there is a crisis now, and the people need from me not just a spiritual food, 
but the physical food. That's and right. That is when the multiplying of the bread. I was I was watching uh, Pastor Sean the other time when he was preaching from John six, right? I enjoy that. You, you all right, all right. Microphone home. <laughs> so um, <laughs> then it you know it became relevant that at the point Jesus had to give find physical food for the people. Mm. So I started you know trying to link people up. And by the grace of God, we got some, you know, amount of money. And I said, okay, my pastors, I need you to call all the church members over to, you know, the, the headquarters so we can give them some food. And that was the initial idea. That was the plan. But when the members were coming, not knowing they, they were coming with their families, you know, this place, we have people um, living, you know, we don't live the way most of the houses are not as you have it in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We don't have walled houses. And so when people are living and they are coming, said, no, the pastor said there is some food stuff for us. Let's go for it. I did not plan for these people. And they came along with my church members. And then the number doubled. But earlier wow. on, earlier on, at midnight, I went over to pray over the food items. Mm. And I, all I did was to ask God to multiply them. The Come people on, Bishop. came, and the, what I prepared, to me, was so small. But we mm. were able to feed all of them. We fed almost, I mean, everybody who came got something. And this Amen. is the Lord it brother this is the lord doing wow. it when some of the leaders around me saw the, the the number of people thronging into the place then they called me and god just spoke to me you know they called me and they said bishop these food items are meant for the church members and not mm. for people who don't belong to the church who don't have oh, membership <laughs> Come on, Bishop. And then the word of God became mm. relevant to me, and I told them in John 3 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he That's gave. It. He never gave his son because of any denomination, because of any church, but Jesus came because of people. That's it. So let us give to anyone who can. This is not the time for church membership. This is not the time to tell when and where you were baptized and who baptized Please. you. This Please. is the time for us to serve the congregation. And it so happened that the Lord bless it. And let me tell you the most amazing thing. It so touched me when I saw the nursing mothers, the aged woman, all having on their lips and saying, Bishop, God bless you. Bishop, God bless you. That alone was just enough for me. I thank God for faithfulness in stewardship. I thank God for faithfulness in his service. And, mm. you know, I, I know, I know um, Pastor David is here and he's so good, but I, I want to raise this song. Blessed assurance. Mm. Jesus is my oh. mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Mm. 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 Wow. What a fault. One of his spirit was. That's it, Bishop. That's it. That's it. Mm. Wow. Jesus is my Savior all the day long. This is my story. That's it. This is my praise, my Savior. 
all day day long. Listen, I don't, I don't know about anybody out there. I don't know about you in the U.S. I don't know about you wherever you are in this part of the world, but I have a story to tell. No matter what mm. is going on, there is a perspective. God is speaking to us. God is giving us a message, and I'm not missing out on it. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let us let us pray. Father, we thank you for this far. Thank you. You have given us a word for the people that's watching, that's listening. God, now we asking you to touch them what they have little, you make it much in the master's hand. That's it. That's it. Father, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what's mm. getting ready to happen. We shall not yeah. die anymore. We break the spirit of poverty. God, you said in your word that you shall supply all of our need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So supply the need right now. It's people that need you right now. You said cast all your care upon you because you care. Somebody need to know that you care right now. That you yeah. have a hand that's out to save and deliver. We thank you right now for your healing power going out right now because by your strife, we are already healed. So I send our healing into the atmosphere right now, Father. And we thank you for those who come with a testimony. Yes, sir. Because I watched the show, I yes, was touched and healed. Not just spiritually, but naturally as well, God. We thank you for what's getting ready to happen. And we bless your holy name, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 He amen. that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide oh. under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, mm. He is my refuge and my fortress. That's my word. God in Him That's will God. I trust. Surely He sure. shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall overcome thee with his feathers. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Yes. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies that's by it, day, it. nor by that's the it. pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, yes. and ten thousand at yes. thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Mm. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Mm. Because thou has made thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. That's it. There That's shall it. no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, that's the word. Hallelujah, that's the somebody. Word. Let me read that again. Yes. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For yes. he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Yes. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Thou young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under his feet. Yes. Brothers yes. and sisters, yes. I see my Bible as my sword. Wow, this <laughs> knocking them enemies out the way. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, says God. Yes. Mm. I will set him on high, says God, because he has known my name. That's it. God. That's it. He shall call upon me, says God, and I will answer him, says God. I will be with him in trouble. Hallelujah. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and That's show it. him my salvation. That's it. That's mm. it. Psalms 91. That's it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Sean, I was wondering. Um, if you could talk a little bit about the voice of God, the movement that you heard uh, when you went down to Baton Rouge and started your ministry and some of the challenges that you had to overcome and you know that God had brought you through. Well, 
Well, first, um, I've been in a great ministries, and great leaders. I take nothing from that. You know, sometimes we go through to prepare us for what we getting ready to walk into. So that's right. That's right. I didn't understand, but I understand now. And so hearing his voice, you know, is challenging because the scripture says in John 10, my sheep know my voice. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He said, my sheep know my voice. So I think in all our lives, we keep forgetting, yeah, you know, the pastor hears for you and other people hear for you, but what about you hearing for yourself? That's right. Because that's I right. think that's the original plan that God had in, in the garden. It was just Adam and God. And so we keep forgetting this. It's, all, it's our own personal relationship that he's trying to build so we can hear him clearly. And so I heard him and I, I, I knew it. You know, I knew, but I, I cannot be honest. I was scared. I was nervous. I, I just was like, no, nah, this, this can't be you. And we have to understand about God because in the, in the garden, remember, Jesus didn't want to do it. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. That's right. When you know it's God, you don't want to do it. That's right. See, I'm That's trying right. to help somebody. How you learn who God is, you're going to want to do it. You don't want to do it. And so you have to understand and say, not my will, but let your will be done. That's See, what I understand when I got here, what he was going to have for me. So when I got here seven, eight months ago, I didn't know as soon as I got here, it was a tornado on the rise. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> now I done got in the area watch where everybody said, well, dad, I don't know. This weather is too hot. We should have stayed in Michigan. Now they was in agreement in Michigan. Yeah, dad, let's move. This <laughs> weather, we finna change. We finna go swimming. But when we got <laughs> in, they felt that heat. They said, hey, we in the house. <laughs> We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> this heat down here, I don't know where it come from. And so uh, I, I was like, what's going on, Lord? Did you send me here? I'm trying to help somebody. So when I got here, I, I was I was staying at my mother-in-law house and father-in-law blessed them for letting us be here. I'm in a small room with me and my family. They sleeping on couches mm. in a small room. You got tornadoes. It's, it's, it's earthquakes all around, storms. You got to hear what I'm mm. telling you. But you got to go through to get to. See, we don't want to go through nothing. That's and right. So understanding, I didn't know what I was going to understand. But, but what, here's the thing why I messed up. See, when God tell you to do something, he's not changing his mind. I'm getting That's ready right. to help somebody. That's Paul right. said That's it. Right. Paul got on his knees and prayed three times. What did he pray, y'all? He said, can you take this from me? I said, nope. <laughs> he got on his knees again. He said, can you take this from me? Nope. So get off your knees because he's not changing this man. He's <laughs> telling you to do what I told you to do. He said, my grace is sufficient. Watch out, now watch walk out. through it. Now walk in what I told you. So what I did was I joined the ministry. God bless that ministry. Great leader. I'm not taking nothing from him. But guess what was happening? He didn't know I was Jonah right in my situation to his boat. I'm helping somebody right now. Because when you walk in this video, you need to be able to your storms to other people's situation. I'm trying to help somebody right now. But when I change this, you know what, God? I'm kind of walking in disobedience. And I'm getting frustrated with other leaders because he said, wait, I'm calling you to be the leader. But we want to put stuff on other people. And God said, no, that's it. That's it. In your season. So what I did was I said, you know what? I'm tired of this, Lord. You got to show me something. And I told my wife we were supposed to go visit another church. And I said, uh, you late. What's what's going on? You late. We got to get up and go. I said, forget it. I'm upset with you. I'm about to hold you accountable. Watch this. God said, how you going to hold her accountable when you're holding your own self accountable? <laughs> I'm going so watch out, watch out, watch out. When you get words out, God coming right back with you. I said, Lord, what you mean? He said, you know what I mean. Within five minutes, I, I wrote an itinerary how the church was going to go. What you mean? I got the phone. I said, look, this is how it's going to go. Wife, you going to open up service. Mother-in-law, mm. going to do the announcements. Father-in-law, you're mm. the new deacon. You're going to read the scripture. Daughter, I need you to open up with song. <laughs> I'm coming with the word. Guess what? My mother-in-law, I heard it from the other room when I texted out. She said, that's what I'm talking about, son. See, when you go out, God will come forward to somebody else 
I heard the voice just like when Jesus got baptized. He said, what? This is my son. I'm well pleased. When you're doing his will, then you will hear his voice. God. And that's what you're looking into. You want to hear from him, but you ain't doing what he called you to do. You got to walk in the And so when I Ooh. stepped faith, it was challenging. Challenging, but God is still opening up doors. Talk to a bishop. I ain't know this guy from Adam and Eve. The bishop said, man, you're going to be a great pastor. I said, well, I want to know if I can use your church. He said, yeah, sure. Wait a minute, sure? I don't even know you. You don't know me. You don't have to know him, but when you in his will, God will open up doors to blow your mind. Just what he That's said. It. He said, I said, well, what can I give you? You know, I'm just, he said, why are you worried about that? You just starting out. Why would you need that burden? He said, whatever you can give me a month. You didn't hear what I He said, you can use this ministry. And that's that's when the, the virus had hit. So I'm telling somebody today, look, we love to say walk by faith and not by sight. But really, we walking by sight and not by faith. I'm going to leave y'all with it. that. I'm going to let that soak in. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's it. Wow. Wow, hallelujah. So you know, preachers, I'm, I'm trying to calm down. You know, preachers get started. We can't stop. Yeah, go oh, ahead and finish that. Somebody walk by faith and put the sight down. Because when you walk in my faith, you can't see nothing. You can't see nothing. All you can do is hear him saying, come on, Peter. Peter was walking water. When he was walking water, he couldn't see nothing. He just heard the wind. We got to listen to his voice. Whatever he say do. Look, I, I don't know. I don't understand, Lord, but I know it's your voice. I'm coming, and watch what He do. That's mm. it. That's wow. it. That's it, Reverend. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, that's a powerful, powerful word. Mm. Wow. Don't walk by sight, but walk by faith. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. You know. You know. You know. You. You just. You had me. You had me laughing a little bit with Bishop Thomas because just yesterday we were talking about uh, Jonah. And here comes <laughs> Pastor Shaw. Here comes Pastor Shaw. We were just talking about Jonah. Yeah, That's man. Right. You know, we were, and, That's what uh, and, and, and so, and you know, one of the, one of the main emphasis that we came up with is that sometimes, sometimes, God will make you uncomfortable. Mm. So you get up out that boat. You know? oh, Sometimes definitely. he'll make you uncomfortable so that you'll get up and go do what he told you to do. Just like he said, just like he did for you. Right? You know? He said, okay, so you about to be a little agitated right now. <laughs> you know? You're going to be a little uncomfortable right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. And then it said, all of a sudden, you heard, you heard God's voice say, what about you, David Rhodes? Are you doing what I told you to do, Amen. Mr. Thomas, Pastor David? And you put your own name, whoever's listening and watching, put your own name into it. Are you right. doing what God is calling you to do? Are you walking by your sight? Mm. Or are you walking by your faith? Mm. Mm. I know the journey gets hard. I know that for a fact. You know, Jonah, there was a reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, brothers and sisters. It wasn't just because. There was a strong reason. You know, I think he gets a bad rap sometimes, brothers, because Jonah, you got to remember this. When he went on that boat, he didn't have a contingency with him. You got to remember now, the, the disciples, the apostles, they had a group around him around them. They had scribes. They had other disciples with them. You got to remember, we go back to Elijah and mm. Elijah. They right, had right, a right. contingency. They right. had people with them. Right. God called this one man to go into this terrible, God called it a great city. It was a terrible city. I mean, they stripped the skin off of the, off of the, uh, off of the Israelites. Mm. They, they cut their heads off. They made necklaces out of their ears and nose. And I, I mean, they were a terrible city. And God says, go preach to these people. So here's my point. And it's obvious. Walk by faith. This is Sean's point. It ain't my That's point. It. Walk it. by faith and not by sight. 
Mm, that's good work, man. Thank you so much for that. I want to uh, I want to take a moment here to uh, as uh, Pastor David. Uh, we've been on an hour now, uh, Pastor David. I would like for you to, uh, if you could, if you would, please think of a song in your heart that you could close us out with. Uh, but first, but first, Bishop, I would like to give you the last word um, before Pastor David closes us out. Um, if you have a word, I know you do, um, that you would like to share with the people. Um. <clears throat> I, 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 I think um, uh, Pastor Sean just ministered to me once again. You know, he ministered to me yesterday, and he's just done so again. I don't know what's, what is, is it about him, but he's continued to minister to me. Amen. And, he, you know, he said one thing. He said, remove the sight away. Is, is that what he said? He mm -hmm. said, remove the sight. And I looked at him, and all three of you were wearing lenses. You are wearing lenses right now. <laughs> all, all. And I remember something I learned from basic science. You know, the, the spirit just ministered something into my heart. You know, we have, when you go in for your lens, you know, they have the, the one for short sight. That's and right. The long. And depending on which type of lens you're using, there is the lens you use and things that are so small become so big in front of you. Mm -hmm. And go there ahead. is, you have the other kind of lens too that pushes things, you know, so far away from you. Beloved, my dear friends, we are in crisis. But depending on which lens you are using. Ooh, come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> come on, Bishop. How are you going to see what's going on around you? <laughs> if you're wearing that kind of lens and things that are so small look like giants before you. <laughs> and that's Pastor Sean's message. I need you to change your lens. <laughs> yes. You can use evil yes. for good. Genesis right. chapter 50, verse 20. Joseph said to the brothers, You meant it for evil, but God hmm. meant it for good. Yes. Depending ah, on the kind of lens you are using, all you see around Ooh. are dead bodies, sick people. <laughs> you see a virus becoming so huge. Ask yourself. The all of Israel were running away from Goliath. And yeah. a young man came on the scene. And when everybody was running this direction, he chose right. to run a different yeah. direction. That's right. Everybody saw Goliath as somebody too big to meet. But this young man saw Goliath too big to miss. <laughs> what kind of a lens are you using? <laughs> Come on, Come on, Doctor. Get my plane ticket. Get my plane ticket. Yes, Doctor. It's time to go right now. Your lens. Change your lens. Change your lens. Change God your lens. is up to something. If you don't get the right lens, you will not see it. You have to look at it through the eyes of faith. That's yeah. it. Your lens can deceive you. Change it. Yes. You see what God is doing. That's it. <laughs> That's my message. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Bishop. Well, well, well. Well, there's a lily in the valley. Mm. Uh, yes, sir. Bright as the morning star. Oh, lily. Of yeah. the valley, bright as the morning star, oh, Lily. Of mm. the valley, he's bright as the morning star. Amen. 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 I know what I'm going to find, y'all. There is joy 
in the mm. valley, mm. and it's bright as the morning Lord, star. Hallelujah. Oh, joy in the valley, bright as the morning star. Oh, joy in the valley, and it's bright as the morning star. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Oh, man. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. I need that album. I need that album, man. Man, somebody get Kirk Franklin on the line. Somebody yes, send this to Kirk Franklin, please. Y'all so, yes. so lucky David told me to be quiet because I was about to shout all over this. I need that out. I need that out. Stop, watch buddy. out. Watch out. Praise <laughs> 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 God. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's, let's close in a word of prayer, brothers. Our Father, our God, yes, we say thank you, Father, thank for you, the Lord privilege Jesus. to serve your throne. Yes, our Father and our God, we say thank you for the privilege to go to work on your thank behalf. You, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. God, I say thank you for your plan of salvation. Yes. God, I say thank you for plucking us out of sin, God, and putting yes. us on the righteous path, Father God. Father, I say thank you for your darling son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, thank you for your, your actions, your obedience to the cross. Yeah. Mm. In, the midst, in the midst of all the pain that you went through, you didn't say a mumbling word. Amen. Father God, we say yeah. thank you for your spirit that has yeah. come down to this earth to comfort us mm. in times like this. Mm. Holy Spirit, mm. Holy Spirit, we know that you're everywhere yeah. right now. Mm. Holy Spirit, I know you're in Ghana. Holy Spirit, I know you're in Baton Rouge. Holy Spirit, I know you're in Tipido. Holy Spirit, you're right here in my room. And Holy Spirit, I know you're in all the rooms of the viewers that are watching. I ask that you would continue to build us and magnify us and prick us and give us unctions and charge us to do God's will, mm. to change our lens so that what is little doesn't become big. Holy That's Spirit, it. I ask that you would give us the faith so that we don't walk by sight. Mm. Holy Spirit, we thank you for all of your work that you're doing in the kingdom. Now, God, help us to walk righteous. Help us to stay on the narrow path. Mm. God, help us, God. Help us to hear your word so that we can activate your plan and we can go and save the lost. Father God, I thank you for the privilege, the opportunity that you've given us right here on this platform. Mm. Without this virus, we wouldn't be doing this. Thank you, God, so that our voice can go around the globe. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. We know that you're going to get the glory. We know that you're going to get the glory out of all this pain on this earth. We thank you, and it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we will be back on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I am going to ask these gentlemen to peep in on us occasionally. It's Amen. just so rich. It's so good. I thank you so much for your commitment this week, brothers. I love you. We'll talk to you soon. Amen. Amen.